Hi, and welcome to Lamplight City. Now this is an adventure game that came out quite recently and the developer was very nice to contact me and offer me a review build of the game. So I have been following the development of this game but I don't know much about the story because I don't want to know too much. But what I do know is that you are a detective and you solve cases and depending on what you do in those cases you could end up not really solving it or not exactly finding out the whole story so you could mess up your your game a little bit by the choices you make which as you know is a little frustrating to me because I like to get the full picture but I understand it increases replayability but enough about this I will adjust my audio settings and then we shall start a new game <laughs> Rough night eight. So um, I've played around a little bit just to get the feel of the game from uh, a, like a demo version. And uh, I think this is us and this is our partner, Bill. <laughs> the carriage is on fire. Bill, wake up! The carriage is on fire! That's only funny when I do it to you. What's the matter? Have a rough night? Uh, bit too much Bollingworth ale is all. That stuff really creeps up on you. Sorry I couldn't join you, but I was long overdue for a quiet night in with Addy. That's fine. There'll be plenty of other opportunities. <laughs> Hell, maybe Adelaide can even join us. It's been ages since she last drank me under the table. I'm afraid she mostly sticks to tea these days. Miles, what exactly is it we're looking into? Uh, I may have dozed off during the briefing. <laughs> That's not very good police work, mate. Captain Snelling is um, really going to notice appa your apparent uh, drinking problem these days. Honestly, Bill, one of these days Snelling's going to notice. No, he won't. Why do you think they put him behind a desk? The man couldn't find his own backside with a pair of pliers and a lantern. Very funny. Anyway, it's a burglary at the Hambrook Flower Shop. A burglary, eh? How dull. Eh, at least we'll have enough time to get a drink afterwards. You seem awfully certain of that. I am. In fact, I'd bet the devil my head that we're done within the hour. Well, the devil's gonna be disappointed that his winnings are so meager. Oh, you just jinxed it, mate. Uh, something's gonna happen. Ah, we've arrived. After you, Bill. After you, Bill. Thank you. Keep the change. That was an overly sexual noise. And so, our night of excitement begins. You more than anyone else should know that there's rarely a dull night in Chumley. I have a feeling tonight will be the exception. Until we get to the pub, that is. Keep your mind on the case, Bill. Now let's get a move on. Bill, uh, I think we need to stage an, an intervention for you, my, my good man. And look at that scenery. Everything about this game looks quite beautiful. I love these glowy lights. And I had no idea how you pronounced Chumley, since there were so many more letters. It was like Chalmondley. But no, it's Chumley. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, I right-clicked. I have a notebook. Clues, suspects, documents, current case, honor among thieves. 
The Hanbrook flower shop has been burglarized. Will the burglar return or is this investigation just a formality? Speak to the owner. Gotcha. I can't believe that thing made it all the way across the Atlantic in less than a week. Don't scoff at the future, Miles. Pretty soon, we'll all be riding those things to work. Especially considering Prince Harold is their big celebrity passenger. Oh, I wish. I, I wish we could get we could take take these to work. What else do you want to say? Street lamp. Glad this thing is lit. This isn't really the type of place I'd prefer to be at this time of night. Don't worry, Miles. I've got your back. I know you do, Bill. This place is lit. Trash? There must be something in the trash. Fordham? What are you doing? I was going to check inside this trash can for clues. Miles, in the 15 years we've been partners, how many times have you found something inside a trash can that wasn't garbage? Fair point. <laughs> Fair point. But you know, it might just be this time that there might be some clues in here. We'll come back to this trash can. No point wasting time searching through a dirty old trash can. You finally learned. I'm so proud. I finally made you proud, Bill. I finally learned not to stick my hand in trash in shady neighborhoods. Looks like they've had some trouble with vandalism. Pretty much every business in this part of town has. So I get it, we're in a bad neighborhood. Looks like they've had some pretty much... Bill, could I have a word? What's on your mind, Fordham? Ooh, I like this talking screen. Lovely. A burglary at a flower shop. Not the most thrilling case we've had, is it? If I didn't know any better, I'd say Snelling's been giving us the boring cases lately on purpose. Why would he do something like that? He's eyeing a promotion to chief of police. He'd sell his own mother's cane if he thought it would help. Plus, it's no secret he doesn't like us. I can't understand why. I've shown him nothing but respect. It's because you're too good at what you do. And because you're friends with me. What's that got to do with anything? Not everyone is as open-minded as you, Miles. Let's just leave it at that. You ever miss living out here, Bill? About as much as you missed stepping in that pile of horseshit last week. Uh, I was distracted by that story you were telling me about your sister. How's she doing out west, anyway? Well, she's not in the chum, so... fantastic. Living here was about as fun as wearing a vest made of meat to a dogfight. I'm glad we both managed to get out. Oh, and by the way, Miles, you didn't do such a great job of cleaning your shoes. Hmm. That would explain all the funny looks I've been getting. Still feeling rough, Bill? Yes. But I'll feel better once this case is finished and we can go down to the Angel for a pint or four. Hair of the dog? No better medicine. Actually, a lot of other better medicines than that. When's the last time you took any time off? That's a good question. What year is this again? I think we've both been working a bit too much lately. Addie's been wanting to go visit her mother in Dixie. Maybe we can all go. That sounds nice, but uh, I wouldn't want to be a third wheel on a visit to your in-laws. Unless... Would Adelaide's brother be there by any chance? You're incorrigible, Bill. It's one of my finer qualities. Got any opinions on the upcoming election? I'd just be glad when it's all over. It seems like the last few months have been nothing but people giving opinions and telling me what to do without a moment's peace. I know what you mean. I already saw some kids putting up Atwood posters down my street. I already drew mustaches in all the ones on my street. Handlebar? Yeah, you know me too well. I always thought of Atwood as more of a Van Dyke type of man myself. Hmm, I can see that. Yeah. Well, there's something to do tomorrow. I don't know if you can hear in the background on the music track, but there are some... wailing baby noises. They're very faint, but they're there. So we're just chit-chatting. I hope this game isn't one of those timed things, because I will... Just go through all conversation topics. I don't care. You enjoying this weather? It's a nice evening for it, not too hot. I find a bit of fresh air always helps clear out the mental cobwebs. It's just too bad the air in the chum is about as fresh as a week old corpse. At any rate, it'll be winter before you know it. The whole city will be shut down and we'll be digging bodies out from under the snowbanks. Always something to look forward to. <laughs> that truly sounds horrible. The ferry ride over was surprisingly uneventful, don't you think? I know. It doesn't really feel like a visit to the chum without seeing at least one fist fight. Oh well. There's always the ride back. Let's get back to it. Alright. Alright. 
<laughs> At least one fifth is fine. Come on, Bill. Come on, Bill. Charming little place, isn't it? Yeah. Charming, but empty. We need to find the owner. Always so to the point, Fordham. If ever there was a better time to stop and smell the flowers. I think I'll leave that to you, Bill. With my allergies? Hardly. It's a nice, tidy little shop in the middle of a bad neighborhood. Hanging plants. Plants hanging on hooks. Nice space-saving method. I'd probably bang my head against them constantly if I had them in my apartment. Well, just don't put them in areas where you would bang your head. Gosh, Bill. These prices are pretty reasonable. The place I go in Worcester is clearly robbing me blind. If you think those are bad, don't go near the flower shops in Leon. Noted. You seem to know a lot about flower shops. They seem to be part of the watering system for the flowers. I haven't seen old piping like this in a while. Seems like someone's reluctant to upgrade. This is quite the selection. Come over here and take a whiff, Bill. Sure, if you don't mind me getting snot all over your coat. Oh, no, not the Myers case all over again. On second thought, you can just stay over there. I get the impression that this is the kind of game that I should save a lot. Because of mo multiple decisions, I don't want to miss a thing. Not too many left. Seems business isn't so bad around here. Well, you know what they say. There are only three certainties in life. Death, taxes, and people taking advantage of sales. I think I'm definitely a person that takes advantage of sales. I'm a sales hawk. Mostly a bunch of fertilizer and growth tonics. Growth tonics, eh? Plant growth tonics, Bill? Of course. I knew that. Gosh, Bill, grow up, man. <laughs> it was a little funny. The staircase isn't very well lit. I'll go first. That way you can catch me if I fall. We should probably ask for permission before heading up there. We ask for no permission. All right, let's ring the bell. And get some service around this place. Be right there. Thank you. Oh, hello, gentlemen. I must say you caught me by surprise. I was preparing to close soon. May I help you find anything? The flowers in the center display are half price this week, and I have a special on chrysanthemums today. Or perhaps a custom bouquet for the special ladies in your lives? I have no need myself, but uh, maybe Adelaide would appreciate a little something. Eh, Miles? Those peonies in the corner look nice. I'm afraid we're not here as customers tonight, ma'am. We'd like to have a word with the proprietor. Is he in? I see. I am Cecilia Handbrook, and this is my shop. What can I do for you, gentlemen? I'm Detective Miles Fordham, and this is my partner, William Legere. We received a report of a burglary at your store. A report? From whom? I never contacted the police before, and I didn't this time, either. It was made anonymously, but are you saying this isn't the first time it's happened? Correct. It's happened three times. But considering the police hardly care about the daily muggings and vandalisms around here, I didn't think they would be interested in something so... trivial. Well, we're here now, and we'll do all we can to help you. We'll have to see about that. If you wouldn't mind, Mrs. Sandbrook, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Very well, Detective. So you didn't call the police, eh? Could you give me the details concerning the burglaries? About three weeks ago on Monday, I noticed that my order of Easter lilies was missing. At first, I thought nothing of it. Sometimes certain types of flowers are unavailable or arrive in poor condition. These things happen. Then two weeks ago on Wednesday, it happened again. But this time, I noticed something rather odd. Go on. When I opened the shop, there were six crowns and ten shillings on the counter. That's exactly the cost of two orders of lilies. Last Friday, it happened yet again. The lilies were missing, and there was payment for one order on the counter. I believe that someone has been breaking into my shop after hours, taking the lilies, and leaving money behind. How unusual. How dare they. Hmm, before we talk about these, tell me about yourself. Have you been in business long? 
Yes, I opened this shop 30 years ago, along with my late husband, David. But the past 10 years, I've been running things on my own. Don't you feel unsafe being here by yourself so late into the night? Detective, when you've lived in this part of town as long as I have, it takes quite a lot to scare you. She's a tough old lady. You go, girl. Have you noticed any suspicious characters lurking around? Detective Fordham, this is Chumley. You can't throw a stone without hitting a suspicious character. And if you've noticed my window, you'd be aware that stones get thrown around quite a bit in this neighborhood. If you're looking for trouble, you're far more likely to find it out there than in here. I meant if you'd seen anyone out of the ordinary near your shop. Only the two men from the police who entered it tonight. That is most definitely out of the ordinary. All right. Calm down. Tell me more about the break-in. Have you found any evidence of a break-in? No, the front door is always locked. My assistant Trevor and I are the only ones with the key. Are there any other points of access to the building? The upstairs windows, I suppose, but I make sure to keep them locked, and neither of them have been broken. Would you allow us to have a look upstairs? <sighs> is that really necessary? I was just about to close up the shop. It won't take but a moment. Fine, I suppose you may, but please, don't dally too long. Why don't you tell me about good old Trevor? You mentioned your assistant has the other shop key. What can you tell me about him? His name is Trevor Hastings, and he has been working for me for the past ten years. Do you trust him? Implicitly. I've known him for ages, and he has been my full-time assistant since shortly after my husband died. You're not suggesting he had anything to do with this, are you? Not at all. I would like to speak with him, though. Where might I find him? It's Friday, so he should be on his way back from the docks right now. He'll be bringing my flower order within the hour. Good. We'll meet him here, then. If that's all right with you. I suppose I don't really have much of a choice, do I? I wonder if it, if it is Trevor. Because... He's either, I don't know, stealing them for some reason and leaving money, or he likes her. So this burglar has been paying for the stolen goods? That would appear to be the case, yes. I really don't think this could even be considered a crime. That's one of the reasons I didn't bother reporting it to the police. And the other reasons? Oh, I think I've already made those quite clear, Detective. I think that's all the information I need for now. All right, Detective. All right. Wait for Trevor Hastings and speak to him. Find a point of entry upstairs. We're gonna go upstairs, but what do you think, Bill? You seem to know a lot about it, about this place. Got a minute, Bill? For you, Miles, I've got five. Aw. I've heard of honor among thieves, but have you ever known a thief to pay for stolen goods? Perhaps conducting normal business is uh, just too boring for him. Do you think he might be doing it for the thrill? There could be any number of reasons. The best way to find out is to catch the culprit and ask him ourselves. I'm still thinking it's Trevor. I mean, maybe he's just taking those lilies and leaving the money and he's making a huge flower arrangement for Mrs. Ha Hanbrook. Just so he can impress her because he loves her. Right? What's your impression of dear old Mrs. Hanbrook? I like her. Good old-fashioned, tough-as-nails chumley woman. Reminds me of my mother. Your mother was never quite so stubborn. Why do you suppose she's so reluctant to accept our help? It's a chum thing, Miles. You wouldn't understand. Let's get back to it. All right. All right. Interesting choice of decor in here. Perhaps it wasn't always used as a storeroom, although I can understand why it would have been converted. Yeah, it is rather drafty in here. Drafty? Well, that could only mean that the point of entry is the window, since they don't have a back door. I think they said that. Unmarked. But if the smell is anything to go by, this is where the flowers are stored when delivered. I'll keep my distance, then. Yep, you don't want to get snot all over the place. I don't think this window would serve as a viable means of entry. It's a nice view, though. You can hardly see the vomit and manure piles on the street from up here. Yeah, not bad. Although, it doesn't open, I don't think. 
I've seen this type of device before. It's a special container for growing plants. Specific temperature and water conditions can be adjusted. Seems to be empty right now, though. And judging by the dust, it hasn't been used in a long time, if ever. It seems Mrs. Hanbrook isn't too fond of steam tech, or just doesn't understand it. I saw something shiny in here, but then it went away. Was it just dust? Oh, it seems like it. It's a nice effect. Seems to be the broken pot storage area. Why not just throw them away, I wonder? It's likely they're going to be repaired. I noticed some faint cracks in some of the pots downstairs. A young lady. Perhaps a relation of Mrs. Hambrook? I can see the resemblance. Sort of. A young... I can see... A pastoral landscape. Definitely nowhere near here. I've never much understood art. But it would be nice to see a place like that in person. I would imagine that keeping a consistent temperature in here is important for the flowers. When do you suppose this contraption was last serviced? Hard to say. Definitely not recently, if the dust buildup is any indication. Yeah, that's not dangerous at all. No peril whatsoever. Hmm, fire escape. Ah, here we go. Gap. Oh, you, you can definitely just sneak something in here and just pull, pull the latch up. It's not difficult to figure out where they're coming in from. This provides a means of escape from the top floor, or access to this window from the ground. Interesting. There's a gap between the window and the frame here. No wonder it's so drafty in this room. The window latch. Securely locked. Hmm. I wonder. What are you thinking, Fordham? Then it's time for an experiment. I'm going to need a tool, however. Something long and thin should do the trick. Shouldn't be too hard to find something like that around here. Objective added. Find the long, thin tool, and we're still waiting for Trevor. Oh, okay. So this is upstairs windows. Suspects and documents. Got it. So we're going to exit the screen, and we're going to go downstairs because there's nothing here to pick up. Hotspot icons will change when new interactions are available. You don't say. So things I've inspected before might have different actions on them as I progress through the story. Alright, I'll have to keep a watch of that. Ah, here we go. Hanging plants. I can definitely get some wire off of those. Aha! This hook is exactly what I need. Mrs. Hanbrook, may I borrow this hook for a few minutes? It's crucial to our investigation. Is that so? Yes. I promise I'll put it back as soon as I'm done. Please do, Detective. Where is my inventory? Good. Bill, it's time for our experiment. And uh, what is this experiment going to be exactly? Simple. I'm going to see if this hook can get me inside the shop. Hmm. Rather dark out here. Watch your step, then. This experiment of yours isn't worth a broken neck. I'll be fine. Now then, could you please close and lock the window, Bill? What now? Oh, oh, I'm actually controlling the hook. Well, that's a nice touch. There we go. Easy peasy. Well, I'd say this is fairly incontrovertible proof that the building can easily be broken into without arousing suspicion. Where'd you learn how to do that, anyway? You taught me, remember? Nah. Are you sure it was me? Positive. We were a few pints in at the Angel about five years ago, and you decided I should learn how to pick locks. What else have I taught you how to do while drunk? That would be telling. No spoilers. I wouldn't exactly classify this as lock picking. More, uh, put wire in hole and lift up latch. There's no... There's not a lot of skill involved, Bill. 
We've talked enough for now, Miles. Let me know when you've discovered something new. All right, then. Jeez. Ah, Mr. Trevor. Ah, Trevor. Evening, Cecilia. I've got the order ready to bring in. Trevor, these are Detectives Fordham and Leger. They say there's been a report about the burglaries, and they're here investigating. I... I only did it because I think it's been going on too long. As much as you want to, we can't handle this ourselves. We can discuss the matter later. In the meantime, the detective would like a word with you. I'll be needing to bring in the flowers first, if that's all right. Otherwise, some hooligan's likely to run off with them. My partner will keep an eye on your flowers. Bill, would you mind? Ah, the glamour of police work. Now, Mr. Hastings, if I could ask you a few questions. Go on, then. What can you tell me about the recent burglaries? I wish Cecilia had contacted you a lot sooner. She's a damn fine woman. But sometimes I think she'd rather jump in a rose bush than ask for help. Had to take matters into my own hands. This needs taken care of, and we can't do it on our own, as much as Cecilia would like to. Anyhow, all I know is someone's been making off with some flowers and leaving money behind. No idea who it could be, how they're getting in, or why they even bother paying. In my day, if you robbed a place, you did it the right way. It's a sad state of affairs when even burglars don't do their jobs correctly. Do you have much experience with burglary, Mr. Hastings? No, I never said that, Detective. Have you noticed anyone or anything suspicious around here recently? Nothing but the usual roughnecks, ragamuffins, and drunkards. Like I said, it's a real mystery. Could you walk me through the process of your deliveries? Of course. There's no great science to it. On Monday, Wednesday, and Friday afternoons, Cecilia gives me her list of flowers to pick up from the wholesalers. I head over to Gas Cone around sunset when they get their shipment, and I give them her order. They load up the crate, I pay for it, and then I lug it back here. How long does that take? Between moving the crate and getting it across the river on the ferry? A couple of hours. Usually the store is closed by then, so I use my key to get in and leave the crate inside for Cecilia to open in the morning. That's all there is to it. Told you it wasn't very complicated. Do you ever leave the crate unattended during that time? No, sir. Never more than a minute. I may be old, but I got good eyes. I'd see if there were anything amiss. Besides that, I check to make sure the crate is still sealed when I drop it off. I'm not about to let Cecilia down by being careless. How long have you been working for Mrs. Hanbrook? Been about 10 years now, I reckon. I used to help with deliveries now and then when it was her and David, her husband. But after he passed, she offered to make me her assistant. Unfortunate way to get it, but I needed the work. Used to be I had a job at one of the airship yards, but they let me go after I was injured by one of those newfangled steam machines. So the offer came at a good time. Besides that, Cecilia needed looking after, even though she'd never admit it. If I'm being honest, we're both getting a bit long in the tooth. Not sure how much longer we'll be keeping this up, but as long as I'm upright and breathing, I'll be bringing these crates along. Even if it is murder on my back. I admire your work ethic. I've got a job to do. Not enough people these days seem to respect that. Thanks for your time, Mr. Hastings. I'll let you get back to work. Appreciate it, Detective. If you don't mind, Detective, I still need to check the crate before I bring it in. Of course. Thank you again for your help. Learn anything? Possibly. I may have an idea. Ah, you're being cryptic. That's always a good sign. But if you've got a plan, let's talk about it.